Hello friends, I don't know about y'all, but I am having a blast doing these videos. So I'm going to do one more problem and then call it a night for me. We're going to do chapter 4.3 from 3rd edition of Chemical Process Analysis by Richard Feldman. So here we have a liquid mixture of benzene and toluene containing 55% benzene by mass, which is to be partially evaporated to yield a vapor containing 85% benzene and a residual liquid containing 10.6% benzene by mass. Suppose the process is to be carried out continuously and at a steady state with a feed rate of 100 kg per hour of this feed mixture. Let m dot v and m dot l be the mass flow rates of the vapor and liquid product streams respectively. We are to draw and label a process flow chart, then write and solve the balances on the total mass and on the benzene and to determine the expected values of m dot v and m dot l. For each balance, state which terms of the general balance equation. Remember when in doubt, accumulation equals n minus l, plus generation minus consumption. You discard it and y, you discard it. Okay, so very similar to the last example. So, you know the drill, pause the video, try it on your own. Okay, so I'm gonna start by drawing the system. And here we have this distillation column, okay, represented by this box. So this is actually a separations problem, which we'll be talking about, you take that in your senior year, with either separation processes or unit operations. And so we have the feed, right? This is the 55% by mass benzene. And I'm gonna use B for benzene and T for toluene. And it separates. Over here, we have the vapor. Down here, we have the liquid, okay? So now, I'm going to write on top is the feed, the distillate, and the bottoms. Like I said, this is a separation problem. And uh, we're actually going to change the variable soon. But I just want you to kind of be aware that we're actually going to do stuff that you're definitely going to see again. And most definitely in industry if you become a process engineer. And so go ahead and uh, try it out yourself a little bit more. You know, we, we know the... Oh look, we have some variables that you can plug in. So look, we can plug in the vapor flow rates, the liquid flow rate, up here and down here. So let's just plug it in. We already know the feed is 100 kilograms per hour, and the vapor flow rate is going to be m dot v and m dot l for the liquid. Okay. And this time I'm going to try to use colors. It's going to help a lot. It's a very typical mass balance problem. And I'm going to use W for the mass fraction of the species. Previously, um, when we talked about mole fraction, uh, I, I did a couple videos on that. So if you want to review that, you can check those out. The reason I want to do uh, the reason I want to do W is because for liquid and vapor, we're going to use X and Y in the future. So I'm going to use W to kind of make it less confusing in the future. Okay, and. Um, we can begin to write some of the mass fractions, right? So if it's 55%, the benzene mass fraction is 0.55 kilograms of benzene per kilogram of the feed, right? Per kilogram total of this feed stream. Similarly, we can replace it for uh, toluene, the balance. The balance of 55% is going to be 45%, right? So I can write the balance of um, toluene in the feed is going to be 45%. And notice how the summation of these terms is going to be 1, right? 0 0.55 plus 0 0.45. The summation of the mass fraction is going to be 1. That's the definition of a fraction. It has to equal 1, okay? Keep that in mind. So I want you to go ahead and do that for the rest of these. So, like so. So the benzene and the vapor is going to be 85%, and the toluene in the vapor is going to be 15% kilograms of the components with respect to the kilograms of the stream. So this is the inlet and this is the overhead. Now the bottoms, the liquid phase, again, same thing. Now careful, this is where you might begin to make some mistakes such as this. What I might have done back in the day is write something like 0 0.0106 or 0 0.0106 or something like that. Uh, 1 minus 0 0.016 is 0.894, so that's where this balance is, okay? So just be careful of those little things like that, okay? Because these numbers matter. So now, it's time for the mass balance. When in doubt, 
Simulation equals in minus out. And now we can make some assumptions. So we're going to assume steady state. This is steady state operation because they didn't give us any inclination to believe otherwise. And we're going to assume that there's no reaction. So we're just going to say that 0 equals in minus out or that n equals out. Namely, this is really the summation of all the feed flow rates going into the system is equal to the summation of all the feed flow rates leaving the system leaving the system, excuse me. So you're adding up everything that's going in, you're adding up everything that's going in, okay? So go ahead and do that. If you haven't made it this far, try it again. Pause the video, all right? All right, how far did you get? So everything coming in is equal to everything coming out. This is gonna be really box this equation. This is gonna be, I told you to box a couple of equations, but that really for this class, n equals out. Pretty much from here on out, <laughs> here on, out. All right, so there's two steps we can do. The overall mass balance, the benzene balance, and we don't really need to do the toluene balance because why? If we know the benzene, we automatically know the toluene. It's just the balance of it. It's just whatever is left of the, of the total, okay? So overall mass balance, we're gonna add everything that's gray, okay? So adding everything that's coming in, 100, Right? And that a little trick is to tell your mind, hey, look, look at these arrows. That's why we draw the arrows, because the arrow, this one's going in, and this one's going out. This one's going out. So we're going to add this one, m.feed is equal to, right? Don't, don't confuse what's going on the left side and the right side, because they're all pointing to the right. It's just whatever's going into the system, whatever's going out of the system, okay? So really, this is the m.feed is equal to the m.vapor plus m.liquid, right? We know the end off feed, so we can replace that if you want. Personally, I, I generally like to keep it in terms of the variables, but in this case, we're going to replace 100 kilograms. And these two are variables, so we don't know these. These are unknown variables, okay? We're done with the overall mass balance. Now we can do the benzene balance. We can box this equation. I like to put it um, on top, generally, if I work on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. And just keep that in mind. This is our equation one. For the benzene balance, okay, so... This might have been a little tricky for me the first time, and I was just kind of following this cookie cutter algorithm, but I didn't really think about why I was doing it for a good while. So let's talk about why for a sec before we're gonna do what we're gonna do. So remember, the mass fraction is the total is the mass of the component with with respect to the total mass of the stream, okay? Or the mass flow rate of the component with respect to the total mass flow rate of the stream, okay? By the way, these are equivalent because if you divide both sides by time, they're going to be the same thing. So it's a ratio, right? So think about what we have. Let's let's look at the the feed stream for for benzene. Think about what we have. So we have we have W. We have this guy, and we have the stream. So that means we can solve for what the mass of the component, right? So I'm going to say the mass of the component is going to be the mass of the stream times the mass fraction of the component. Right? In other words, in this case, to solve for the mass of benzene, you multiply by the total mass of the feed times the mass fraction of benzene. Okay, make sure you understand that because I don't want you to just memorize this cookie cutter approach. Okay? The cookie cutter approach is this. You just simply multiply the feed stream times the mass fraction, and that will give you your mass flow rate of benzene in the feed. Okay? So do that again for these guys and these guys. Do it in terms of the variables first, and then plug in the numbers. Okay, so really, it's it's really just multiplying the top times the mass fraction. So in this case, it's gonna be 0.55 times 100, and it's just gonna be 55 kilogram benzene per hour. See, notice how the units change. Before it was kilograms benzene per kilogram because it's a fraction. Now it's kilograms benzene per hour. You can either box it or leave a mental note, or we can plug it in later. So again, do it right here. The cookie cutter approach is just multiplying the top times the uh, times the uh, fraction, so it's going to be 0.85 times the flow rate on top, and again down here, what is it going to be? 0.106 times m dot l. Okay. Oh, this is a typo. It's going to be 0.106 times m, m dot l. Okay, so now we can do the mass balance on the uh, on the benzene. So we're going to add the mass coming in. It's going to be this guy is equal to 
this guy plus this guy, right? Which we calculated before. So this is the right number. Please excuse this number is not correct. Please use this number. It's going to be 55, right, from here is equal to the vapor benzene plus the liquid benzene. Okay. 0.85 this variable plus 0.106 of this other variable. And look, look at this equation and look at this equation. Does it tell you anything? Yeah, we've got two equations, two unknowns, right? Two equations, the unknowns are m dot v and m dot l. So at this point, it's more just math gymnastics. You can do it any way you like, but I'm going to show you this way. I generally start by rearranging the overall mass balance equation, so OMB, and I'm just going to solve arbitrarily for m dot v. It's going to be 100 minus m dot l. And look, I can plug it in here, right? Let's plug it directly in here. Just algebra. 55, plug it in. We're going to probably uh, distribute this guy. And look, these are all constants. We can solve for this variable. And just doing a little bit of math manipulation, we see that m dot l is actually 40.32 kilograms per hour. Does this make sense? Well, if the total feed is 100 kilograms per hour and the liquid stream is 40 kilograms per hour, and that means this has to be, what, 60. I want you guys to do the calculations. I want you all to try doing these other calculations, okay? So um, that was it for part A. And let's take a look at part B. Sorry, I forgot to mention I crossed out part C. I'm not going to do that today. Let's suppose a process to be carried out in a closed container that initially contains 100 kilograms of the liquid mixture. So wait a second. This was... 100 kilograms per hour, this is 100 kilograms. It's the same thing. It's literally going to be the same exact equation except your units change. Which I'm not going to do that. I want you to do that. Do the same exact thing without me. Everything will change. Everything will be constant, rather. Except the units will be in terms of constant mass instead of a rate. So in this one, we did a rate. This one is going to be a, uh, a mass. And the final answer should be the same. Okay? Try it out. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Apologies for that uh, typo. It's rather <clears throat> embarrassing. Anyway, click the link to get to the uh, playlist if you're not already on it. It should be on the screen or in the description. Check out my website if you want more videos. Please leave a recommendation for anything else. And don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.